Okay, quick thing before uh, the video starts, I'd like to give my appreciation to the old Amtrak logo. It just looks so much better to me personally than the new one. This one was used from 1971 to 2000 and just, you know, looks a lot better to me because, I mean, I just like older stuff like that um, generally more than newer stuff, new sleek stuff, new modern stuff. Um, I can get why people would like the new logo more and I can get why people like the old logo more. I just got to say, old logo, great, never forget it. Amtrak. I'm sure if you're watching this, then you know what Amtrak is. For those of you who don't, it's America's federally funded national rail provider, being, in many cases, the only form of rail transport outside of short-distance commuter rail. And it's been losing money for the government since 1971. In 2017, Amtrak lost nearly a billion dollars overall, that is, lower from the over a billion dollars in 2016. And the largest money loss for them? Long distance routes. According to Amtrak's March 2018 monthly performance report, the most money any line lost was the Empire Builder, which goes between Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, and Chicago, Illinois. Interestingly enough, the train going westbound actually stops and splits in half in Spokane before going to Seattle and Portland for a turnaround which causes whichever train arrives in Spokane first to have to wait for the other half to arrive when going eastbound, causing long delays, I can imagine. The route loses Amtrak about $33 million, if I'm right, and a few long-distance routes lose about $31 million. It's not until you get under $10 million in losses that you see short lines in a potential list of Amtrak routes by loss. And there are no lines categorized as long-distance that make money. All a loss. The first solution is to just seize operations for long distances, right? If they're losing all the money, then they could be cut out, and though not profitable, Amtrak would lose less. Well, no. You see, the long distance routes do have a purpose, if not a financial one. If someone, for whatever reason, couldn't fly or drive, then the long distance routes are definitely the best way to get around. And in the right circumstances, short lines are better than driving and flying. So I have a proposal. From my point of view, which is that I don't have all that much information on the inner workings of Amtrak or who they affect all that much, take all this with a grain of salt. Amtrak, in their current situation, needs to focus a lot more on short distance routes. Here's exactly what I propose. Amtrak, instead of running a train like the Empire Builder every day like they currently do, should instead run it like thrice or four times a week. Do this for all of their long distance route trains. Empire Builder, Coast Starlight, Southwest, Chief California Zephyr, all that stuff. This could be a good solution since it cuts off about four or three days of operating expenses, replacing them with maybe two in the weekend and two or one in the week, while keeping the main attraction to long distance lines, vacations. Many of the people who take these do it to travel for leisure, whether it be a vacation to LA or Chicago. That seems to be the main reason, and for many people that can be really most any day of the week. Planes dominate long distance travel, mostly due to their speed, really. An Amtrak, running mostly on freight company tracks, can't compete with airlines in the slightest on speed. They can, however, compete with luxury. Trains simply have a lot more space with smoother, less complex stops, giving people full dining experiences and views in massive viewing lounges on the long distance routes. So why exactly should they focus on short distance then? I haven't touched on that yet. Amtrak should focus more on short distance routes since it puts airplanes at a disadvantage even more. Going to the airport for two hours and then flying, let's say, between Seattle and Portland would just be a waste saving you like an hour against driving. And Amtrak can capitalize on this. They already have a line that services the route, the Amtrak Cascades route, which goes all the way into central Oregon and all the way north to Vancouver, Canada. In the Seattle-Portland route, they could focus more on advertising the surface and perhaps get people to pick it more often, as well as capitalize on the extra space by offering better meals and views and cars or planes on the same route as well as, perhaps, using some of the extra money from all the expenses they would save to make the trains faster and more organized. This goes for all their short-distance routes, by the way. This would let them focus on routes with less operating expenses while keeping them as a transportation service. And I'm sure that there are many other improvements or completely different plans that would work a lot better. This is just what I would recommend given the option and the same resources that I currently have. And this obviously wouldn't make them completely profitable, just lose less money. There are profitable Amtrak out routes out there, the prime example being the Acela Express, going between Boston and Washington, D.C., which has a net profit of $150 million and is the high speed of the nation, going at an average of 90 miles an hour, though a maximum of 150 miles an hour. And the second most profitable, the Northeast Regional, is more or less just a slower version of the Acela Express from the seams of it, coming in at about $100 million in pure profit. So Amtrak can be profitable, it's just that they're not, and this is a way that I believe that they could be theoretically more profitable.